Welcome to Lobs Math. This is our first lesson in using trigonometry and triangles that are not right, also known as the law of cosines. So we are going to figure out where the law of cosines comes from and then see an application. First of all, we're going to start off with a triangle that is not right, and we're going to draw the altitude where it is perpendicular to one of the sides. The three sides of that triangle are sides A, B, and C. The altitude cut side C into two smaller pieces, side uh, segment M and segment N, and we have the altitude, which we've now labeled as H. Using the segment addition postulate, we can say that M plus N equals C, and using that, we can solve for one of the smaller segments. We're going to solve for segment N. And we're now going to look at this one right triangle, triangle CAP. We know it's a right triangle because the altitude is perpendicular to that side. And so this right triangle, I'm going to talk about right triangle trigonometry and look at the cosine of angle A. The cosine of angle A, of course, is the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse, so it's M over B. And I'm going to use that to solve the segment M. And I'm also going to use this same right triangle using the sine of angle A and that's going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse, which is h over b, and I'm going to use that equation to solve for the h, for the altitude. Now I'm going to combine what I got from equation 1 with the first part of equation 2, in that I started with n equals c minus m, but I'm going to substitute for m b cosine of a. So now I have a, an equation uh, for n using just the sides c and b and the angle a, I have an equation for m right here. I have the for the equation m using b and a cosine of a, and I have an equation here to talk about h using b and a. So you'll notice I'm now able to take these pieces m, h, and n that are in this triangle and ref uh, talk about them in terms of the non-right triangles side and an angle, and this one a side and an angle and here two different sides at an angle. Next thing I'm going to do is look at the other right triangle, CBP, and not use right triangle trig, but use the Pythagorean theorem in that. And remember that the Pythagorean theorem is that the hypotenuse, this is the hypotenuse squared, is equal to the sum of the two legs squared. I'm going to use what I learned in equation two about H, and what I learned in equation 3 about n, and do some substitution. And so now I have this equation, and what I'd like you to do is to write this down, pause the video, expand, and collect like terms. And when you're done with that, start the video again. I'll do a brief recap, and we'll go from there. Well, here's the recap. We started with a triangle, ABC, that's not a right triangle and we had all this going on, but I want to now take out that altitude so that we're just looking at the non-right triangle. And I want to make sure you're paying attention to the orientation of the labeling of the sides and the angles, in that angle A and side A are opposite each other, angle B and side B are opposite each other, and angle C and side C are opposite each other. We ended with this equation I asked you to, to expand and collect like terms. And so remember that in this one, you're just going to be distributing that squared to both b and the sine. And for this second part, this is like a binomial that's being squared. So remember when you have binomial squared, you always get the first term squared, and you get the last term squared, and then you would multiply these two times two. When we do all that, we get the following. And then I asked you to collect like terms, and you might say there's no like terms, but these two terms that I've underlined in red both have a b squared. So let's write them closer together. I'm going to, oops, sorry about that. I'm going to take this term and I'm going to bring it closer to that first term. And so now here they are. They're both right here. And I'm going to factor out the b squared. And when I factor out the b squared, I'm very happy because right here I notice I have the fundamental identity that sine squared a plus cosine squared a. I know that that's going to equal 1, so I'm going to have b squared times 1. So I'm going to simplify. And I end up with a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine of a. 
This is important because now I have taken this non-right triangle and I have found a connection between the three sides and one of the angles using cosine. Notice that I have angle A here. There's no side A on the left hand, or excuse me, the right hand side of the equation, but I have the side A squared over on the left. And this is important because while this is true, A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine of A, I could just as easily have been using angle B to solve for side B. And if I did that, I would, instead of having an A squared here, I'd have the B squared here, and this would be angle B, and the only let other sides I'd have here would be A and C. And no different than I could use angle C to solve for side C. You might notice that in each case, the one that I have written down here, this one, A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine of A, is using side, angle, side, to solve for the third side. This is called the law of cosines. So how is it useful? Well, let's look at a situation where we have two towns. We have the town of Alice and the town of Baker. And what separates them is this mountain range. And they want to connect the town of Alice to the town of Baker with a nice straight tunnel through those mountains. But they need to know how far that is. And they have to be standing on the ground to figure out how far it is. And unfortunately, when you're standing at Alice, you can't see Baker because it's on the other side of the mountain. Same thing if you're standing at Baker, you can't see Alice because she's on the other side of the mountain. So they hire some engineers, and the engineers find a location right here that they can, free of all, um, there's no trees or mountains in the way, but from this location they can spy the town of Alice. They can look down this direction and see the town of Alice. And also from this location, they have a clean line of sight to the town of Baker. And they use their engineering devices to measure this distance since it's a clean line of sight. They could even walk the distance since they could just walk straight that way. And they find that it's 18 units. We don't really know what units this is in, so um, you know, just 18 units. And the same thing is that it's 20 units to the town of Baker. They are also able to figure that the angle between these two lines of sight, this angle, is 55 degrees. Well, what they've got is side, angle, side, and they're trying to find this third side of a triangle, which is exactly lending itself for the law of cosines. And so to find the distance from the town of Alice to the town of Baker is to use that law of cosines. Well, right now the equation has this distance squared, so we're going to take the square root to figure that out, plug that into our calculator, and we get that the distance is 17.6 units. And this is a very useful um, application for the law of cosines. And that's the end of our first lesson on using trigonometry in triangles that are not right. We will have another lesson on the next law, which is the law of signs.